Let's play a game. If you knew every single thing in this video, leave a comment saying I won. And if you didn't know everything in this video, leave a comment saying I lost. Okay, let's get started. Do you want some ice cream on a warm summer day, but can't because Alex hardly ever shows up for work? All you need to do is hatch a slime by the ice cream stand. For some wild reason, the game then thinks that the ice cream stand is being manned by a staff member and will allow you to buy some ice cream. Are you a busy person with many things to do but still want to pet all of your animals every single day? When petting animals, it is really easy to accidentally click on the same animal twice. And then this annoying dialogue will pop up. To avoid this, simply greet your animals with a piece of hay in your hand. Oh, you only have fully upgraded farm buildings and can't just take a piece of hay out of the hay hopper? Well then just place down a bomb near the order of fed hay. This will explode and destroy the hay. And that will allow you to use the hopper to get some hay. This is also good if you want to store some hay in a chest for a cold winter. If you plant pumpkins, cauliflowers, or melons in a 3x3 grid, there is a chance that these crops can turn into a giant crop after they have fully matured. You can harvest these crops using an axe and they can yield more crops when compared to simply harvesting them. To increase the chance of getting giant crops, don't harvest them when they are ready, just keep them watered. When you earn exactly 10 million gold in a single sale, the end game sale summary will display your total earnings as zero gold. Processing your crops will greatly increase the value of your crops by a tremendous amount. But it is important to note that the quality of these crops does not matter. Regular quality crops will produce the same type of wine as iridium quality crops. If you are low on crops and gold, sell the higher quality crops and process the regular quality crops. In the early to mid game, hold off on purchasing a shed. A deluxe barn has just as as much interior space as a deluxe shed. There can be really good loot in garbage bins. They are few and far in between, but these resources can be really valuable if you are lucky. How are you guys doing so far? Don't forget to comment if you win or lose. I will be counting those comments and if you are winning so far, hit that like button. It will give you luck for the next few. During the extended family key quest, you can catch the legendary fish multiple times. So you could catch the legend a bunch of times and profit off of those sweet sweet valuable fish. If you happen to find a prismatic shard when cracking open Omni Geodes at Clint, stop immediately, grab your Geode Crusher and place an Omni Geode in it. You will get another prismatic shard. This is also applicable for Iridium Ore. Here is a simple one. You can stack buffs. You are allowed to receive a buff from a single cooked meal and you can also receive a buff from a single beverage. To take advantage of this, eat a lucky lunch with some ginger ale for a massive luck boost. Enjoy those treasure floors. If you need to replace your crystallariums with a different mineral, remember to first hit your crystallariums with an axe. That way, you'll reclaim the original gem and not lose it to the void. If you just place jades and crystallariums that are producing diamonds, you will lose all of those diamonds. The entrance to the sewer is so far away from your farm, but did you know that there is another entrance that is even further away? That is right, right over here in the cinder sap forest by the sewage pipe, there is actually an entrance to the sewer. Crazy, right? Solar panels are actually overpowered. They are so much more effective than lightning rods. With just 10 solar panels, you will start to produce so many of these that you can actually start to sell them because you might run out of uses for them. If you are still in your first year and you are approaching the end of the year, head over to Clint and purchase some coal. Coal is much cheaper in the first year for some reason and coal is critical in the mid 
to late game. The same is true for both wood and stone, but coal is harder to get in my opinion. Mixed seeds are highly valuable. Save all of your mixed seeds and plant them on your ginger island farm. These have a chance to grow into pineapple crops. Pineapples are pretty valuable, so take advantage of these when you first arrive on Ginger Island. Monster Musk plus Floor 35 in the dangerous versions of the mines, and most importantly, a burglar ring will result in you getting two Omni Geodes per ghost you defeat. It's kind of overpowered. Slime hutches are fun little buildings that will allow you to breed slimes, but you will need to keep their water bowls full to receive slime sacks that then can be used to create more slime eggs. Instead of spending the time to do that every single day, just place down an iridium sprinkler. Now the water bowls will remain full forever. If you forgot to collect your goods at the Stardew Valley Fair, you can simply head over to Mayor Lewis's Manor and take a look at the lost and found bin. Back in the day, those items would have been completely lost. Are you swimming in key gems and don't know what to do with them? Well, you could just convert those key gems into gold. Simply purchase a bunch of hoppers from Mr. Key, drop those into deconstructors, and then turn them into radioactive bars. With the blacksmithing profession, each radioactive bar will sell for 4,500 gold. Not very effective, but it is possible. This might seem crazy, but did you know that iridium sprinklers are only 7% more effective than quality sprinklers? Their only real advantage is that they will allow you to get giant crops and they just look better on your farm. Tea saplings are one of the only crops that can be placed anywhere in the game as long as it is inside of a garden pot. So you could fill up the entire valley with garden pots with tea saplings if you wanted to. You can also place these on your ginger island farm. Speaking of tea saplings, these things can actually be highly profitable in the early game. In a brand new playthrough, you could befriend Caroline really early and then focus all of your efforts on collecting the ingredients to craft tea tree saplings. Now instead of planting them, at making tea, you could sell them for 500 gold each. 500 gold is really good in the early game. Did you know that chopping down tree stumps will only get you one experience? Experience point, but chopping down the trunk will give you 12 experience. This is what my farm looked like after this. If you get attacked by a toxic green ghost, you might get the horrible nauseated debuff. This debuff will prevent you from eating any food and healing up. Eating ginger ale will remove this debuff. It is quite the lifesaver. If you hatch slimes inside of your house, your spouse will freak out, scream at the slimes, and one-shot them. Your spouse will not put up with your pet slimes. Kind of unfair since Abigail gets to keep a hamster. So, did you win or did you lose? Don't forget to let me know. I assume you guys are pros and know it all, but let's find out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.